Mr. Alam, uh, is this your first uh, interview? Yes, sir. So why do why you wish to join the civil services? Sir, the civil services it is because of the profession and the personal reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, the professional reasons, it, uh, the career progression in civil services, especially the IAS, IPS, the wide diversity it provides in the job. Mm -hmm. And uh, the personal reasons include the job satisfaction and as well as uh, the uh, parental aspirations as well. Okay. Okay. Now, you have political science and uh, international relations as your optional subject. Have you heard of this uh, theory of separation of powers? Yes, sir. Who propounded this theory? Uh, sir, it is by John Locke. Or is it Montesquieu? Uh, mm, uh, but I have read it in the John Locke okay. and the theory of the governments and uh, the... So what is, what do you understand by this uh, theory of separation of powers? What does it mean in the present context? So the theory of separation of powers, it means that the legislature, executive and the judiciary power of the government machinery should be separated. And uh, it, it, is, it should be that the, those who are making the law and those who are executing the law and those who are adjudicating or deciding on the law those the, the power enshrined on the body should be different. Now, Allah, when you talk of separation of powers, you also talk of checks and balances. Yes, sir. What is that? Sir, suppose uh, parliament makes uh, some laws which are uh, abrogating the principles of the constitutions oh. or uh, the, some constitutional amendments like which is uh, abrogating the basic structure of the constitution, then there should be the judiciary which makes a checks and balance on the uh, authority of the parliament. So, uh, uh, of the various constitutions uh, in, the, in the world, which one would you say is closest to this concept of separation of powers? Which constitution, which country? Sir, uh, the US constitution, where there is a strict separation. Yeah, they have adopted this. Yes. Sir. Now, in the US, you know, the, they came to a situation where there was a federal shutdown. Yes, sir. What was, how can a federal shutdown take this? Can you please explain very briefly? Yes, sir. Sir, uh, the, uh, in US President uh, uh, Donald Trump is uh, demanding $5.8 billion for building a wall and that uh, amount has to be sanctioned through, the, uh, through their Congress. Okay. And since they are not doing that, uh, the President has uh, declared a shutdown that uh, the Central and the, all those employees have to go on uh, vacation. So, so th this is because of the power. You, you partly correct. Yes, sir. He wants to build a wall. He wants funding. Mm -hmm. But in the U.S. system, the appropriations bill yes. has to be approved by the president. Yes. So the president said, I will not approve it until you don't give me this. Absolutely. And therefore, it automatically led to a federal shutdown. Now that the president ordered that people to go home. Okay? Yes. That was the issue. Right. Now, you know, there's this Lokpal Act. Uh, who are the members uh, of the, uh, of the you know, act who would appoint the Lokpal? There's a five-member body. Yes, sir. Who are these? Sir, it includes, uh, I'm not explicitly aware of the exact number of members, but it includes some member of judiciary, the CGI, and the, and there's some judiciary member I'm not aware you of. You have forgotten the Prime Minister totally? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Yes. There are five members. Yes, sir. Just look up on them. Okay. So what is happening on the Lokpal issue? Sir, in Lokpal, uh, yes sir, I remember one thing, that there is a one of leader of opposition party, uh, there is a, that he has to be in the selecting uh, member as well. No, that is an old issue, that has been sorted out. That is not the issue. Yes, sir. What is the situation now? Sir, uh, the situation right now, now is that even after passing of the Lokpal 2013, uh, five years have been passed, but even though the Lokpal has not been passed. Have you heard of this concept of aspirational districts? Yes, sir. How many aspirational districts are there? There are, sir, total 135 aspirational districts. 150. 150. Oh, sorry. So, what was the reason for bringing in this uh, aspirational yeah. districts concept? Sir, uh, because of the few districts and the few estates especially have been left behind in the growth, there has been lack of implementation of the government programs. Right. And uh, that's because of that to, uh, to synergize, to converge these programs and to bring competition among these estates. So basically, for development of these districts which are lagging behind, yes, yes, there are certain parameters are laid down. What were those parameters? Sir, so it is based on the ACC data, the health and the educational parameters, which has been, and the, also the left wing extremist areas, which has been uh, used to decide. Yeah, so there, there are five parameters. Mm -hmm. Check up on that. 
Yes, sir. I, and I, I and out of these 150, 35, well, that's a different issue. There are 35 LWE districts, yes, sir. right? Yes, sir. Then uh, 30 districts will be supervised directly by the Niti yes, sir. and the remaining 50 by yes, various, sir. Ministries sir. Of the, yes. various ministries of the government. Yes. Right? So is there any mechanism to monitor the activities? Yes, sir. Who does that? Sir, there will be central and the state level per body officer who will collaborate with right. the district. Yeah, very good. Yes. Thank you. Okay, it is said that our constitution is bulky. Yes, sir. Why do you think uh, our constitution has become so bulky? Sir, given the situation that our in the country like India is, it is of uh, wide diversity. There are the aspirations of the different sections of the people has to be may have to be incorporated in the constitution. There are various regions like uh, which which uh, where there are specific demands of that those regions which need to be incorporated in the constitutions, as well as the language, culture, reason, all those things uh, make our constitution bulky. If we don't have a separate constitution for the states, unlike other countries, no, sir, we don't. That, have that's it. one of the that qualities. Yes. Okay, now why do we need emergency powers? Sir, you mean Article Three Fifty? Ah, yes, Three Fifty Two to ah, Three Sixty Three Sixty Two, sir. Sir, it may be the situation that sometimes the internal disturbance, the armed rebellions or the war and the external aggressions happens in our country. In those kind of situations, to deal with these, those situations, the central government should have some uh, extraordinary powers uh, to, uh, to manage the state governments and the finances and all those. You inadvertently mentioned one phrase, the internal disturbance. No, sir. Why was, you mentioned it? It was my mistake. You, why, uh, do you know? Uh, can you tell us something about this? Yes, sir. Sir, internal disturbance clause was first previously in our original constitution. Then after 44th Constitutional Amendment Act in 1978, it was replaced with the, the last Army. emergency was on this. Clause. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, tell us, uh, what are the safeguards against misuse of Article 356? Sir, sir uh, regarding the uh, misuse of the Article 356 in SR Bombay case, in, uh, so the Supreme Court has given the clear uh, guidelines. There should be the credible evidence. It should be the the the, the president can take the actions only on the some there, if there is a material evidence, and that material evidence should be such that any logical person should make out of that. First thing, the second thing is that the corruption, maladministration, and the and the misuse of the governance. This cannot be the criteria to. The material is subject to judicial. Yes, sir. You're right. Now, uh, how uh, how does a bill lapse? And uh, can you give some recently did some bills lapse? What In those? which regards, sorry, sir? Uh, what is the uh, under what circumstances a bill lapses? Okay, yes, sir. Sir, if the bill uh, does not pass through the uh, Rajya Sabha and uh, the uh, and the session of the Lok Sabha completes after the five years. And then in that situation, the, those over, those are the bills. Some, there were some bills in yes, the news. Sir, sir triple talaq bills have been lapsed. The citizenship amendment bills have been lapsed. And uh, transgender uh, rights act, I think it, it also has not been passed. So I think it also has been lapsed. Okay, what the uh, what, uh, legality of uh, election manifestos, uh, including three ways like cycle, computer, some states even, uh, some uh, political parties even from uh, mixers and grinders, TV. Yes, sir. What, what is the legality and what is the latest position on this? Sir, uh, right now in uh, modern code of conduct, it is there that uh, the political party should not or the ruling party should not do this. But the Supreme Court... Election minister is to... No, uh, yes, sir. I am talking about the election, including these as previous in the election manifesto. Mm -hmm. What is the latest? Sir, Supreme Court has given one judgment regarding this that the free bees are assault on the free and fair uh, election procedure, so it should not be there. But there should there is no le uh, le legal laws of the oh, Supreme Court upheld it. They said that all these free bees which flow from uh, directive principles are mm -hmm. okay. okay. In the case of Tamil Nadu, and then after that the PR came case, mm -hmm. PR case mm -hmm. was cycle and all that. Last question: Can you uh, tell us? Uh, uh, about the late, uh, you have been in the college uh, disciplinary committee. Yes, sir. What is the latest guideline on ragging, anti-ragging? What are the punishments given? Yes, sir. Sir, in uh, Supreme Court has given the uh, explicit guidelines that there should be uh, affidavit has to be filed by every second year students, and if there is any cases of the ragging, there should be a committee within the college, and which will uh, take a, a, a actions and they will expel even the students. And, okay, right. Can 
the pani there. He needs some water. water. Sacha, you have Sacha, right? Yes, you spent almost for three years in Qualcomm. One and a half years. Yeah. First was one to eighty. First was no, internship no. of uh, one. Uh, first was internship of three months, and then after that one and a half year of jobs. But what kind of job is this? It was mainly technology oriented job where I was in the power system optimization where any new commercial chip is Qualcomm is going to launch. I have to work for the if there is any extra addition features, I have to see for any recreation or any things. Or if uh, so, I was basically in the power optimization team. I have to collaborate with the various system teams of various modules, and based on that, I Basically, the I was the sole owner of power system optimization of the. That sounds very exciting. Yes, sir. Yeah. Why did you give it up? You sir. could have continued and then prepared for the civil service. No, sir. Uh, it, it was a really exhaustive job. Means uh, it requires at least twelve hours of a day, and uh, I was not able to, in in from my college days itself. I was keen towards the civil services. I was preparing from my college, but uh, after my college, I found out that. Means with, with job I could not able to give time. So you didn't get much time. Yes, sir. Okay. Since you're in the power system area, what what do you understand by SCADA? Sir, SCADA is a tool, but we are not using it. We are not tool. using it. Okay. And uh, smart grid. Yes, sir. What is a smart grid? Sir, a smart grid is a new concept in the power grid transmission, where uh, where there is a incorporation of the uh, different sensors, actuators, the smart meterings, uh, and to integrate our power grids with the renewable energy sources, so that when uh, when we source power from any generating sources, we optimally uh, supply power to each and every resources, every household industries. A apart from that, we uh, take water, uh, take uh, power from the renewable sources. We take power from the, we we can uh, efficiently manage this power load factors. And uh, though and so all this part we do they have a geographical area limitation or they can be extended to any area? Sir, so, uh, a smart grids project is right now by the Ministry of Power and uh, there has been work is going on. But on geographical limitation, I am not aware of what you mean to ask. So, yes, sir. can I have a smart grid stretching from Delhi to Calcutta or it has to be in a small pocket in the area district? Sir, it could be uh, from the over a period of time. Yes, sir. Over a period of time. Yes, sir. Currently, it is not because it is right now in the What do you understand by distributed generation? Distributed generation. I am not aware. You are not aware. Decentralized distributed generation. Not aware of this. Okay. Uh, recently, Government of India has declared hydro electricity as a renewable source. Yes, sir. Non renewable. Do you agree with that? With the engineering background? Yes, sir. Uh, actually, uh, right now, means what I am aware that be below 25 megawatt hydro uh, power generation will be the renewable energy source, and above 25 megawatt of power generating source, it will be non renewable. So, I think above 925 megawatt it should be considered as a non renewable source because it has a geological impact, it has an impact on forest diversion and uh, the, the kind of uh, changes we make to the ecology which, which are irreversible and uh, but is it not contrary to the fundamental definition but basically when you say non-renewable that means something which cannot be renewed yes, sir. whether we produce 25 megawatts or 500 megawatts yes, water we is renewable right? yes, anyway okay. uh, you worked studied in Guwahati for four years yes, sir. Uh, I'm these days, northeast is in a kind of a turmoil. Uh, at least it used to be. What was the reason? Sir, in northeast, uh, the first reason is the ethnic conflict. Like, suppose if we, I talk of Naga land, in the, there are the Naga aspirations of the people. Uh, the, the, then in uh, Manipur, also, there are the Metis tribes in Arunachal Pradesh. Right now, there was a violence related with the PRC. Uh, apart from that, in Assam, the Bodo land. So, there are various ethnic groups who are demanding autonomy and uh, more and more uh, decentralized powers and th th those are the kind of uh, conflict. What is NRC? 
Sir, NRC is a National Register of Citizens, uh, which was according to the Assam Accord of 1985, uh, according to which any Bangladeshi immigrants after uh, 24th March of 1971 entered into the Assam, uh, those should be identified and, uh, and those should not be included in the NRC. So, which there, uh, you know, there were some changes in the NRC that was brought about, and a few communities were allowed to be included. Which are those communities? The six religious minorities. Oh. So that that is with the citizenship amendment. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Those will be included in the. Uh, so the thing is that those who uh, are of the six religious persecuted minorities in Bangladesh, Pakistan, and Afghanistan, uh, and th who entered uh, before 31st December of 2014, uh, will be uh, in, will be granted the citizenship uh, of uh, India. So they have to be persecuted minorities in these countries of origin. Yes, sir. That is why the Muslims are left out. It's because Muslims are majority in those areas. That's right. That's right. right. Uh, as a very uh, literate member of your community, what is your personal view on triple talaq here? Yes, sir. Triple talaq, uh, the current form in which it is exists, is uh, totally not acceptable. It is derogatory and as well as the ensuing practices it brings to the uh, issues like Nika Halala. So those things are derogatory to the... Uh, and it is also not within the principle of Article 14 and 15 of the Indian Constitution. Even if we see the Supreme Court has cited the kind of the triple talaq which exists in our society right now, is not within the principle of Qurans itself. So that should be uh, declared as none and void in its full uh, sense. So you mean to say that it could be quite consistent with the Sharia law and everything? Uh, no, sir, I do, I'm not meaning that. I'm meaning that the uh, triple talaq which exists in this current form should be uh, declared none and void. Uh, a little bit about foreign policy, uh, because you are in the Indian department. Recently, a US government has come out with some amendments which has affected the IT sector in India. Yes, ID, all the IITs and everything. In the visa rules, what are the changes that have been talked about? Uh, the President Donald Trump, according to its America First Policy, H1B visa, is uh, making changes to ensure that only those uh, who are doing the masters and higher degrees in the United States should be granted the visas. And also, uh, there are going to be stricter rules for getting the green cards. Apart from that, uh, the spouse of the H1B visa previously used to get the H4B visa, and based on that, they used to get uh, employment in the United States also. So, the, uh, the according to the America First, those principles are also uh, means uh, the. President Trump is going to have a check on that. Have they also introduced some concert that only those will be taken in who are who are sufficient qualification, have a certain minimum income level? Yes, sir. You have to give a certificate that they are they, those things cannot be found in a local level? Yes, sir. So, actually, the thing is that if, suppose, Qualcomm United States is going to hire me, they have to prove that there is no American citizen better than me uh, to uh, to hire at that place. Mr. Yes. Yes, Shahab, we are from Bihar, right? Yes, sir. You mentioned some of the areas of strength and weakness of Bihar. Sir, uh, first I will go with the strength. Uh, the agriculture uh, in Bihar is the driving factor and the food processing industry is uh, one sector where, where the Bihar has a very high potential. The second is the Bihar has a very rich legacy of Buddhism and St. India, Gupta and Magadha periods. And th those, so the tourism is of a second big right. uh, uh, potential of the Bihar. And the third uh, big potential is the of the uh, education. The, the Because the, the, there is a high demographic right. Right. Yes. I agree. Yes. Okay. Witnesses? The weaknesses in Bihar is that the caste and the caste is in the subconscious mind of the people and that needs to be changed. Uh, this is the first weakness. That is the weakness at the society level. The second weakness uh, is the uh, because of the low level of uh, development and the industrialization, the corruption is very has become banal. Like uh, there is a wide acceptability of the corruption in the society. Okay. So, and third is the uh, 
Human Development Index. Uh, yes, sir. Human Development Index is uh, very not up to the mark. Per capita income is very low. How is SDI computed? What are the parameters that go into SDI? Sir, HDI is computed based on the health and life expectancy ratio. Uh, the uh, then education parameters like uh, the uh, uh, mean year of schoolies and where is year placed in terms of the HDI? India, sir, India is 130 rank, 130 or 130. No, Bihar is concerned. Where is it? Bihar is. Uh, I'm not sure, but uh, it is not up to much. You mentioned of agriculture as a potential yes, as a potential in this, right? Uh, recently in the budget, certain announcements were made for the agriculture What is your take on that? Sir Pradhan Mandri Kisan Samman uh, according to which the central government is going to provide six thousand rupees to uh, a small and marginal farmer who are holding land up to the... What is the biggest area. advantage of this particular scheme? Sir, this biggest advantage is that the farmers would uh, have the enough credit at the start of the agricultural season as well. They would be able to procure good seeds. Uh, the certified seeds they, right now which they are not able to procure because of lack of uh, funding, uh, lack of credit, they, they will have a better irrigation. And uh, the, uh, so this will... Uh, Obviously, boost the productivity and the production of the food. Also, this will have DBT, right? Yes, sir. So there won't be, there will be no leakage. Leak, there won't be any leakage in that. Uh, Interviewer leakages. What is your take on that? Is it a practical solution to? Sir, it is a practical, but it is a very ambitious uh, project. Uh, we should go uh, with the uh, with with the small small projects like. Uh, Again, and the Betwa we are uh, right now linking. So we should uh, go in that direction. And apart from that, internally. What are the main problems we encounter when conceptualizing this kind of One uh, main problem is that uh, in, in the north, in north uh, rivers, there is a water in the uh, monsoon season as well. And in the south, the water deficit and, and the water in the south will be in the monsoon season as well. So, when the water will not be available ecological in Ecological issues. Yes, sir, ecological issues is also there. There will be forest diversions and... Prohibition in Bihar. What do you take on that? The alcohol prohibition. Yes. Yes. Sir, it is a very good step and it is a novel step taken by your chief minister. How is it running? Sir, it is uh, uh, what I have read and uh, uh, it, is, uh, it is means the government has been able to tackle uh, alcohol uh, prohibition in a very effective manner. So we going for prohibition in the government? Sir, the situation in Bihar and the situation in other states are different. We should not, uh, I mean, I, I, right now I can't comment directly that uh, we should go for complete prohibition on the country because there are different parameters and the scenario which we which we have to take into the account uh, for deciding on the board. There are growing instances of communal riots in this country, right? Yes, sir. Communal disturbances. Yes, sir. What do you take on that? Why is it happening? Yes, sir. Sir, communal, uh, sir, the thing is that uh, means that in our uh, country, somehow, the religion has been in the mind of the people. People are, uh, because of political factors or because of the social factors, people are very much, uh, ascribed to their identities, the ascriptive identities, and, and those identities are used by the political parties at some or the other places, and those uh, relate to the uh, situation like the common affairs. What do you know of OIC? Yes, sir. And why was it in the news recently? Yes, sir. It is Organization of Islamic Nation, Islamic Cooperation. It was in news because of uh, our uh, Ministry of External Affairs, Sushma Swaraj, has been invited in the OIC as a guest. What this is significant about? This is a very significant development given the fact that the kind of leverage Pakistan has on the OIC and even despite of the continuous uh, uh, continuous opposition by the Pakistani, external, uh, Pakistani foreign minister uh, that um, he would boycott and ultimately he had to boycott the OIC and Apart that, the, our uh, external uh, minister, Sushma Swaraj, has given a very a strong message on terrorism at the OIC. That is a very significant development uh, which I am seeing. Thank you.
<coughs> you have worked in private sector. Yes, sir. And now you want to come to the government sector. Yes, sir. So what are the three best practices that you would bring from private to government? Yes, sir. So the first uh, practices I want to bring is that in uh, private sector, there is a there is a low emphasis on hierarchy. Suppose I have some ideas or something. Uh, this is also in government, but suppose I have some ideas or something, I can directly approach my director. I can have an appointment or I can explain my ideas. Even if sometimes if my director is not making it. say freedom. Yes, sir. Not freedom. There, there is a very, uh, means whatever, if suppose some projects, if I am very inclined to, I can go and tell that I want to work in, on this project. Okay, okay, number two. Then number two project is that, uh, number two benefit is that there is a... Not benefit, uh, best practice. Yes, sir, sorry. Uh, the, the technology, suppose there is no paper. In my one and a half year of my job, there is not a single paper I have used in my one and a half year of job. Everything is on the email. Suppose there is some decision have to be taken, all my uh, nine managers will be... Okay, which is the third one? Third one is the, uh, sir, uh, infrastructure. If I see the public-private sector infrastructure, <coughs> is a better infrastructure. If I visit any government offices, this is because of we have lack of resources and all those things. No, but all that already is there in government. What all you are saying exists. So I was expecting a little more insight into your comparison of private versus government. Think about it and then we can discuss it later. The internet is completed 30 years yes, in the world. Mm -hmm. But the inventor of internet, yes, who is he? You know? Yes, sir. Tim Berners Lee. He was working. He is not very happy with the progress of internet in 30 years. So, what are the concerns of disadvantages of internet that Mr. Lee is thinking of or what you can think? I have not heard of uh, him, his... Uh, read, uh, read today's paper, oh, yes. okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. but tell me, mm -hmm. as an aware electronic uh, engineer, yes, sir. do you think there are certain dark sides to internet? Yes sir, there, there are some dark sides to internet as well. Mm -hmm. uh, suppose, uh, first I take off the example, like the, in internet, the, the uh, digital dividend has been there, the ruler and the urban digital divide has been there. And because of that, there has been rising inequality. No, dark side to internet. Mm -hmm. Dark side to internet. Think again. Then you are talking of digital uh, yes, India. I am not talking of digital India. I am talking of internet. The so one dark side I could find out that the uh, like these kind of the, these days the terror organizations are uh, communicating each other on the website on the the messaging apps like the way. WhatsApp and uh, Telegrams. So the, these kind of the apps provide immunity and the anonymity to these kind of the, uh, to kind of this information exchange very. Anything that you have read about U.S. president's electoral campaign and the yes, internet? Cam internet? Yes, sir. Cambridge and internet. Internet. What is darknet? So darknet is those uh, kind of the net which is existing, which is not uh, within the available of uh, the normal search engines. It is beyond that scope, and uh, there are the various kind of malicious activities like child pornography and those kind of things exist. There are kind of a drug trafficking and uh, the drug net transfers from here and there. So now you are replying to my first question. Yes, sir. Okay. So think connect. Uh, what are the uses of blockchain? Do you think India has a future? And blockchain? Yes, sir. Has any company started using blockchain in India? Yes, sir.